The Rocky Mountain regions of both the United States and Canada are home to dozens of excellent ski areas. And because both regions are so good, it can be hard to determine which one you should visit for a ski vacation. In this video, my good friend Skier72 and I are going to break down every aspect of a ski vacation in each region so that you guys have the tools to decide which region is best for you. We'll be talking about the Rockies specifically in the states of Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, and the provinces of Alberta and British Columbia. The only ski resorts we will not be factoring in in today's scoring are Whistler Blackcomb and the other Vancouver area hills as those aren't in the Rockies, but we'll be basing the rankings off of every other major ski resort in British Columbia and Alberta. We're going to give you three scores today so that you can make your decision based on the category of rankings that matters to you more when booking a ski vacation. Each subcategory will be given a score out of 10, which will translate into a score out of 100 at the end for each ranking category. The three scores out of 100 will be the pure skiing grade, which primarily looks at factors like snow and terrain, the experience grade, which primarily looks at crowds, access, facilities, and size, and the total grade, which will average the pure skiing and experience grades. Something I should note is that each of our ratings were made independent of each other's. A huge shout out and thank you to Skier72 for partnering with me on this video. If you like Skier's art histories, you should go check out his channel right after this video. It's the top link in the description. Also, a huge shout out and thank you to Arjun B and Big White Ski Resort for providing some of the Canadian footage for this video. His channel and their website are also linked down below if you like what you see. So with that, welcome to the behemoth. On behalf of everyone who helped in the creation of this video, we hope you enjoy and find it helpful. We'll start off in the United States with its pure skiing analysis. The first category is snow quality, in which it earns an 8.5. The western US is known for dry, fluffy snow, and it lives up to its billing. The snow comes early, lasts long, and has a pretty consistent quality, especially in subregions like the Cottonwoods. Any visitor who gets to experience one of these large, dry powder storms is guaranteed to be pleased with the snow quality. This is an easy 8.5 and would be a perfect score if Japan didn't exist. The second category is snow quantity, in which it earns a 9.5. As long as you know where to go, there is almost always good snow in the western US. In fact, there are few places that I would say don't have consistently good snow. Almost all of the west has great snowfall totals and a lot of the resorts have very good retention because of their high altitudes and slope aspects. Especially carried by the cottonwoods of Utah and the incredible early and late season conditions of certain Colorado resorts, the western US gets a nearly perfect score for snow quantity. The third category is beginner terrain, in which it earns a 6. For every Beaver Creek or Deer Valley, which offer great beginner terrain, there's two Jacksons or Snow Basins who are, well, lacking. Strictly speaking, in terms of quantity, the American Rockies do not exactly offer an abundance of beginner terrain. There are certainly a select few resorts, especially in states like Idaho and Colorado, that have really good beginner terrain, but as a whole, the beginner terrain in the US is just barely above average, owing to the resorts that barely have any beginner terrain or whose beginner terrain is much more difficult than a typical green elsewhere. The fourth category is intermediate terrain, in which it earns a 7.5. I'm giving the US this score because while there are certainly resorts with great intermediate terrain, there are also a good number that severely lack in good intermediate terrain or just don't have very good blues. For example, a resort like Snowmass has great intermediate groomers, but right next to Snowmass are Aspen Highlands, Aspen Mountain, and Buttermilk, all of whom specialize in terrain other than intermediate. If you love cruising down blues, you certainly won't have too much trouble finding a good resort for you, but the resorts that miss the mark prevent me from rating this any higher. The fifth category is Advanced Terrain, referring to single black diamond trails, in which it earns a 6. The US gets this score due to the mix of great and terrible advanced terrain you can find throughout the region. There are certain resorts that have great advanced terrain and some that have terrible terrain, but most just have a mix or just average terrain. At most resorts there will be an abundance of mogul runs, but little of other types of advanced terrain, namely steeper groomers and tree skiing. There's a little more of the good terrain, but just a little. The sixth category is Expert and Extreme Terrain, referring to all trails rated double black diamond or harder, in which it earns a 7.5. The Rockies have a number of ski resorts who specialize in expert terrain, and it's not difficult to find some great extreme skiing if you know where to look. Snowbird, Jackson Hole, Silverton, and Taos are just a few of the numerous ski resorts that offer excellent expert terrain. So while there certainly are ski resorts in regions that don't have great extreme skiing, looking at you, Vale, 
Overwhelmingly, the majority of the US has decent to really good extreme terrain. As a result of this imbalance, I can only give it a 7.5, but the US Rockies certainly hold their own in extreme terrain. The seventh category is terrain parks, in which it earns a 7. A lot of ski resorts in the western US don't have big terrain parks, but the few that do compensate for all those that don't. Resorts like Copper offer absolutely insane terrain parks that are great for park rats. Because of the lack of terrain parks, I can't give the US too high of a rating, but the couple of good park mountains hold the US up to an above average rating. The eighth category is Flow and Navigability, in which it earns a 4. Most ski resorts in the US are navigable enough. Signage is generally pretty good, although some resorts don't change signs often and a newly turned blue run will still have a green or black sign. But for the most part, signage is fine. However, I would say that flow at some mountains is just atrocious. It seems like there's not a single resort where you don't have to take catwalks or wait in a forever line at a choke point. As a whole, between flow and navigability, I'm going slightly below average here. The ninth category is off-piste offerings, in which it earns a 6.5. A lot of ski resorts in the US are fully below treeline, so most of the off-piste is tree skiing. Some ski resorts have some really good trees, while others, well, not so much. Some ski resorts advertise their trees and promote going off-piste, while others advise against going in the trees. As a whole, I'm giving off-piste, which for the US just means tree skiing, a slightly above average edge. The tenth and final category is terrain variety, in which it earns a 7.5. Some ski resorts like Big Sky and Winter Park have a great variety of terrain. Some other resorts like Snow Basin and Angel Fire are pretty much one-trick ponies. As a whole, you can generally get a good selection of terrain at some US Rockies resorts, ranging from bowls to trees to moguls to groomers and everything else in between, which yields a very solid rating, balancing out the resorts who don't offer great selections. So having said all that, the US Rockies earn a total score of 70 out of 100 in the pure skiing category. With this rating well above average, I'll put it plainly, the US Rockies have good skiing. However, your choice of resort is highly important to how your overall skiing experience is. Many different ski resorts have many different specialties, but if you pick the right resort for you, you're sure to have a blast skiing in the US. It's absolutely worth booking a trip to the US Rockies to check it out for yourself. Let's pass it off to Skier72 to hear about Canadian skiing. Before we begin, I'd like to explain something about mountain ranges. In the United States, the Rockies refers to a vast variety of sub-ranges that all make up the Rockies complex. For you, such ranges such as the Columbia Range are designated as part of the Rocky Mountain complex, and as such, when you make your ranking by saying Rockies Resorts, you're referring to the entire Rockies region of the United States, including all of the sub-ranges. For us, such a range as the Columbia is not considered part of the Rockies. As such, while you make your rankings for the US Rockies, I will make my rankings for all of Western Canada, not just the couple of resorts that are in the true Rockies. Anyways, let's get back to the ratings. In the first category, snow quality, Canada earns an 8.5. Canada gets a rap from many people for being cold. This is especially true in Alberta and British Columbia. Now, depending on the mountain range, the snow is usually quite reliable, giving a solid 4-5 to five months of ski season all around. Obviously, different subranges have different microclimates and different elevations which can all vary the snow quality at different resorts. However, generally speaking, most major Albertan or British Columbian resorts tend to retain high snow quality throughout the main ski season. The snow quality in Canada certainly isn't up to Japan standards, but it's also a good contender. In our second category, Snow Quantity, Canada earns an 8. Western Canada can see massive snow accumulation in certain areas. For example, there's a stretch of ski resorts in British Columbia's Purcell Mountains that boast legendary, bountiful snow. Of course, there are also many other resorts in areas that don't get nearly as much snow. While not every mountain in Western Canada will be the same all around, I'm looking at you, Fernie. For some regions, Western Canadian snow is world-renowned, earning it well above average on our list. In our third category, Beginner Terrain, Canada earns a 5. Similar to the US, beginner terrain isn't exactly a main staple of resorts in Canada. Obviously, there are some resorts which have incredible beginner setups, such as Sun Peaks, Sunshine, or Big White. Other resorts struggle a bit more in this category, as they don't offer enough greens, or their quality isn't on par for one reason or another. Overall though, most mountains in Western Canada will have average beginner offerings that should be just enough to keep beginner skiers entertained. In the fourth category, Intermediate Terrain, Canada earns a 6. 
While this rating is also subjective, I do believe that most ski resorts here do a better job of attracting intermediate skiers than beginner skiers. Every major resort at least has one pod of decent intermediate terrain, ranging from groomed cruisers to intermediate moguls and tree skiing. If I had to pick specific resorts which I think do intermediate terrain well, Panorama, Lake Louise, and Sun Peaks all come to mind. As a whole, some resorts do it better than others, but because you can pretty consistently find a decent quality of blues, Canada gets an above average rating. In the fifth category, advanced terrain, again referring to just single blacks, Canada gets an 8. Most Western Canadian ski resorts offer a decent selection of advanced skiing terrain. Generally, this terrain tends to comprise a mix of steep mogul fields, tree skiing, and some groomed black terrain. Because almost every mountain resort here offers a good selection of this terrain, and for the most part it's all pretty good, Canada gets a very solid rating in this category. In our sixth category, Expert and Extreme Terrain, Canada earns a 7.5. It's no secret that Canada has some of the world's most extreme ski terrain. Now obviously, you're going to need to know which resorts to hit to find the terrain that you want. Obviously, not every resort will have offerings that cater to advanced skiers looking for the absolutely steepest terrain available. However, Canada does have a solid lineup of mountains that deliver on extreme terrain. Notable examples include Kicking Horse, Revelstoke, or even Lake Louise. These aren't the only resorts in Canada that have advanced terrain, but these resorts do all share an impressive variety of truly challenging terrain. The number of resorts that are lacking in extreme terrain is the only thing preventing me from rating Canada any higher. In the seventh category, terrain parks, Canada earns a four. For lack of a better word, I find Western Canada's terrain park culture to be lacking. Not to say that it doesn't exist at all. It certainly does, and certain resorts do a better job of fostering that culture. But it's just not a true mainstay here like it is for other regions. Because I feel like it's on the come up, I'll give it a rating that's slightly below average. In our eighth category, flow and navigability, Canada earns a five. Most Western Canadian ski resorts employ decent signage that aids in flow and navigability. Some resorts really excel at this, and some resorts really seem to struggle. I have my eyes on you, Mount Norquay. However, as far as flow goes, there are certainly some resorts that struggle with aggress, but others that have really good flow. Overall, this score averages itself out. In the ninth category of off-piece terrain, Canada earns a 7. While snow conditions vary mountain to mountain, Western Canada generally has compelling off-piece terrain. Again, this varies mountain to mountain, but from my experience, most ski resorts encourage guests to fully explore the mountain in a safe way. Obviously, be sure to know the area well, obey ski patrol, and heed all signs posted. Western Canadian resorts offer a variety of off-piece terrain offerings, including unmarked glades and high alpine bowls. With decent offerings, generally pretty good snow, and an overall encouragement to explore the mountain that doesn't exist nearly as much in the U.S., Canada gets a solid score. In the 10th and final category, terrain variety, Canada earns an 8. Most Western Canadian ski resorts have compelling terrain offerings, encompassing a variety of terrain and ability levels. A vast majority of resorts in the region will have solid offerings, ranging from green to extreme, from groomers to moguls, and from trees to bulls. Most ski resorts are practically an all-in-one destination, but there certainly are ski resorts that don't offer the same level of variety. Overall, due to the number of ski resorts with a sizable selection, terrain variety comes in strong. With that, Western Canada earns a total score of 67 out of 100 in pure skiing. This comes out decently above average. As a Canadian, I strongly believe that our mountains deliver incredible skiing. They certainly aren't perfect, and there is lots of room for improvements in many areas. But overall, there's just something about Canada that you have to see to believe. The skiing can be great, and I highly recommend checking it out at some point. Back to you now, Sean Ray. So now, let's break down the pure skiing winner. First off, we'll go category by category. In snow quality, it's a tie. In snow quantity, the advantage goes to the US. In beginner terrain, the advantage goes to the US. In intermediate terrain, the advantage goes to the US. In advanced terrain, the advantage goes to Canada. In expert and extreme terrain, it's a tie. In terrain parks, the advantage goes to the US. In flow and navigability, the advantage goes to Canada. In off-piste offerings, the advantage goes to Canada. In terrain variety, the advantage goes to Canada. As you can see, each region has the advantage in four categories with a tie in two categories. 
When breaking down the numbers, the U.S. scored a 70 while Canada scored a 67, indicating that the U.S. has better pure skiing by an extremely slim margin. Of course, that's not how it will be for everyone. If you find the categories that Canada won to be more important factors to you when booking your vacation, you should probably look to Canada. And of course, the same goes for the U.S. categories. So with that, let's go to the experience analyses. The first category of the experience analysis is resort size, in which the U.S. scores a 10. The western U.S. offers big resorts upon massive resorts. Tired of Vale? Head to Beaver Creek. Not doing it for you? Try Breckenridge. No? How about Keystone or Crested Butte? There are plenty of small ski areas, but if you want a big one, trust me, we've got it. The U.S. gets a perfect score for resort size. The second category is crowds, in which the U.S. scores a 3. Yes, it is possible to find resorts that don't have absolutely gargantuan lift lines. And yes, even when those massive crowds exist, it is possible to avoid those crowds. And, shameless plug, if you're looking to do exactly that at some of the West's finest resorts, you should check out my Insider's Guide series right after this, because this is exactly what that series is designed for. However, all that being said, the crowds in the western US are getting out of hand. Traffic, which we'll talk a bit more about later, is at an all-time high. Lift lines consistently take 30 minutes, and don't even get me started on crowded trails. I can't give it a zero owing to the Arapaho Basins and Sun Valleys of the world, but the U.S. gets a well below average score of 3 in this category. The third category is lift infrastructure, in which the U.S. gets a 7. U.S. lift infrastructure is consistently getting better and better. At almost all of the big resorts, the lift fleet is made up of a medley of older and newer detachables with some older fixed grips in reserve. Some of those older lifts are finally getting replaced as we see projects like Challenger at Sun Valley and Wild Spur at Winter Park. And resorts aren't cheaping out anymore and are finally building luxury lifts like in Europe. You can see this with the Wild Blue Gondola and the Ram Charger 8 builds at Steamboat and Big Sky, respectively. Because we're finally starting to build, I'm giving the US an above average score in this category. The fourth category is on mountain amenities, in which the US gets a 4.5. The U.S. tends to have a lot of small lodges spread across the mountains. Rather than a giant lodge where everyone can fit in and warm up, there's a bunch of small lodges that get quickly overwhelmed. That's why new lodges are hyped arguably more than new lifts because the airy at Copper Mountain is a huge step up from the little tin can that was Solitude Station. The number of lodges are great, but they all just get so overwhelmed. I was tempted to go completely average here, but knowing what Europe can offer makes me go slightly below average. The fifth category is city accessibility and lodging proximity, in which the U.S. gets a 4.5. Salt Lake City is a great place if you want to center a ski vacation and visit as many resorts as possible. However, you're guaranteed to hit traffic, and a whole lot of it. The same can be said for Denver and all of the I-70 resorts. I would recommend taking public transit, except for the part where U.S. transit sucks. In Salt Lake City, there are some buses that you can take, but they'll be stuck in the same traffic. Really, the only thing the U.S. has going for it in accessibility is the Winter Park Ski Train. Would highly, highly recommend. And also, let's not forget about the constant road closures in and around both sets of resorts. And aside from those resorts around those two metropolises, most of the resorts in the U.S. Rockies are pretty remote. There is certainly some slopeside lodging at most of the big resorts, but compared to Europe, our selection is just paltry. The only reason the U.S. doesn't get a lower score is because of the locations of Salt Lake and Denver. The sixth category is elevation, in which the U.S. gets a 3.5. A vast majority of the U.S. Rockies resorts sit at a mile higher above. Getting acclimated to such conditions can take quite a while for some guests. Many ski resorts are so high that they're in the clouds, leading to perennially cloudy conditions. Looking at you, Targi. The altitude and weather of most U.S. Rockies resorts just isn't conducive to large exertion like skiing requires, so I have to give the U.S. a low score in this category. The seventh category is Big Pass Access, in which the U.S. gets a 9.5. Big Pass Access in the western U.S. is absolutely terrific. Between the big two passes, Epic and Icon, and the other smaller passes, such as Indy and Mountain Collective, almost every ski resort is on at least one pass. Every ski resort a vacationer would want to go to, anyway. Heck, if you don't want to use Epic to ski Vale or Beaver Creek or Breckenridge or Keystone, and you don't want to use Icon to ski Copper or Winter Park or the Aspens, you can still ski sunlight on the Indy Pass. The pass access is nearly perfect. Nearly. The eighth category is lodging and ticket cost, in which the U.S. gets a 2. 
Do I even need to speak about this? 250 bucks is absolutely insane for a lift ticket. Lodging makes sense because it's in such high demand, but that doesn't change the fact that it's frickin' expensive. Appalling. The ninth category is Apreski, in which the US gets a 7.5. None of North America can ever match the Apreski scenes of Europe. However, if you know where to go, some of the bigger towns like Jackson Hole and Park City have solid to great apre. As a whole, the US will earn a solid score in this category. The tenth category is Mountain Vibes, in which the US gets a 5.5. Some ski resorts have absolutely impeccable vibes. Heading to A Basin and tailgating in the early riser lot all day is just absolutely unmatched, arguably anywhere in the world. And then there's some resorts that just have uptight, rushed, and titled atmospheres where nobody cares about anyone else and the whole mountain has a palpable tension between skiers. If you've watched the channel for a while, you know all about one such of these resorts. These resorts balance out with those first resorts I described, earning the US a 5.5. All in all, the US earns a 57 out of 100 in its experience. The US experience comes out just barely above average, as the US ski experience can be special, but I've heard way too many stories of people having the worst trips because of traffic, poor lodging, and all sorts of other things. The experience in the US Rockies comes out just above average, but has a large range depending on where you go, and, of course, a little bit of luck. Altogether, the US Rockies are great places to go skiing. The skiing can be great, and the experience can be great. Of course, both have the potential to be poor as well, but as a whole, the US Rockies are a very good choice for a ski vacation. Alright, Skier72, back to you. Alright, let's talk about Canada's experience. In the first category of resort size, Canada scores 7. In Canada, the absence of the US Forest Service simplifies the process for resorts situated on Crown Land. Unless located within a national or provincial park, Canada's mountainous areas typically fall under Crown Land. Ski development in Crownland follows a surprisingly straightforward and logical path. If a resort on Crownland has the desire, resources, and valid reasons to expand, the likelihood of expansion is high with minimal obstacles. This streamlined process has played a pivotal role in the development of many of Western Canada's biggest ski resorts, such as Panorama or Sun Peaks. And because of this process, we have a very solid selection of large to massive resorts, earning Canada a solidly above average score. In the second category of crowds, Canada scores an 8. Western Canada is extremely remote. To access most Western Canadian resorts by air, visitors will either fly through Vancouver or Calgary. Obviously, smaller airports exist, along with many border crossings. But with unpredictable weather, poor roads, and long travel distances, many resorts see relatively low crowds compared to U.S. counterparts. This is certainly not the case for every resort in Western Canada, but for the vast majority of ski resorts here, crowding will not be an issue at all. In the third category of lift infrastructure, Canada scores a 5. Lift technology in Western Canada is somewhat modern. Major ski resorts usually feature a combination of older and newer detachable chairlifts, complemented by a mix of fixed grip lifts. In recent years, several resorts have made substantial commitments to upgrades and improvements in their aging lift networks. Other resorts and companies, such as RCR, lag behind the ski lift domain, which is apparent in their offerings. Overall, though, most resorts boast adequately modern setups, which earns this category an average score. In the fourth category of on-mountain amenities, Canada scores a 6. Many destination ski resorts offer compelling on-mountain amenities, which complement the ski resorts. Generally speaking, most mountain resorts will have a mix of hotels, condos, single-family homes, restaurants, bars, and shops. Again, some resorts do better and some do worse. I'm sorry, Kimberly, but the mess of hotels, condos, and parquet turn based lodge is not up to the standards of, say, Big White. Now, on mountain lodges, dining, and warming huts are much better at some resorts than at others. Overall, though, most mountains in Western Canada have many on mountain amenities, which gives this category this score. In the fifth category of city accessibility and lodging proximity, Canada scores a 4. As mentioned before, the mountains of Western Canada have two major airports on the outside serving as access gates. These two airports are Vancouver and Calgary. Thus, it's no shocker that the resorts closer to Vancouver and Calgary tend to see higher international visits from airlines. We do need to talk about one cursed highway, the Trans-Canada. Now, unless you want to fly into Kelowna or Cranbrook, or pay a premium and fly into some smaller random airport, there's a good chance that you'll have to use the Trans-Canada Highway. In the summer, it's not uncommon for multiple sections to be closed up by forest fires or other issues. 
It's no better in the winter, where literally anything can happen. At least the most dangerous section between Field and Golden is getting a $451 million makeover, but that's just one small section of the road. With Mountain Villages now on the come up, this category is below average. In the sixth category of elevation, Canada scores a 7.5. This one's interesting. Calgary sits at an elevation of around 3,482 feet. Around seven hours west, the city of Kelowna sits at 1,129 feet. Another five hours west, Vancouver is at the ocean. Obviously, the elevation varies from mountain to mountain, but it's at least an interesting trend. According to Google, the top elevation of Sun Peak sits at 7,060 feet. Contrast that to the top elevation of Lake Louise at 8,650 feet. What does this mean? Well, those top elevation numbers are lower than some of the base elevations in the U.S. This means it'll be much easier to get acclimatized and make large exertions, so I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. In the seventh category of Big Pass Axis, Canada scores a 5. Famously, in 2016, Vail Resorts purchased Whistler Blackcomb for $1.39 billion. In 2019, Powder Corp acquired Silver Star. Boyne Resorts has also owned Vancouver Cypress Mountain since 2001. Apart from these few players, most mountains are owned either by local families or local corporations. That said, this has not deterred Big Pass access in Canada. The Epic Pass has included seven free days at any RCA resort since 2018. The Icon Pass will get you a little more with the Ski Big 3 resorts, Revelstoke, Panorama, Sun Peaks, Red Mountain, and Cypress included. Indy Pass offers Castle Mountain, Big White, Sasquatch, Mount Baldy, and a few other smaller names. Finally, Mountain Collective offers an attractive portfolio of resorts, which I won't get into right now. While these resorts certainly make a pass product compelling, Big Pass Axis is just not as big here as it is down in the States. Canada thus gets an average score. In the 8th category of lodging and ticket cost, Canada scores a 5.5. If you walk up to a big mountain in Canada, be prepared to shell out quite a bit for a day of skiing. Now, to be honest, not every big mountain will gouge you for a walk-up ticket. For example, Castle was $100 Canadian dollars for a Saturday in February. Even if you don't have a multi-resort pass, there are still ways to circumvent unpleasant surprises at the ticket window, for example, Costco lift tickets. Day lift tickets in Canada are fairly average, though I do believe that the price has gone dramatically up at many resorts. Thus, I have given it a score just slightly above average. In the ninth category of Opry Ski, Canada scores a 3. Some mountains have a great party atmosphere vibe. Others are more tailored to families and the nightlife is quieter. Overall though, this will vary quite a bit depending on which mountain you visit. In my opinion, more mountains here are suited for families who prefer limited nightlife and opry. I'm not saying it's non-existent, but it's just not that prevalent. In the 10th and final category of mountain vibes, Canada gets a 9. Canada is just special. You really have to come out and experience it to understand it. Most mountains have a pretty chill, laid-back atmosphere. As developments in the mountains is either extremely restricted or heavily planned out, I do feel that most big mountains have a genuine unique feel to them that distinguishes them from their American counterparts. It's nearly impeccable. Adding it all up, Canada has an experience score of 60 out of 100. This is a very solid experience grade, meaning that it's likely that you'll have a good experience if you ski in Canada. Our skiing experience isn't absolutely divine, but it's very solid and it's worth booking a vacation. Is Canada the best ski region in the world? Not at all. Does it offer a compelling collection of unique resorts that each offer incredibly unique experiences? Absolutely. Western Canada is a killer ski region, one that everyone should experience. I wouldn't exactly call Western Canada the best in the world, but it's definitely high up there somewhere. As a whole, the Canadian Rockies are a very solid region to book a ski vacation. So now, let's break down the experience winner. Let's go category by category. In resort size, the advantage goes to the US. In crowds, the advantage goes to Canada. In lift infrastructure, the advantage goes to the US. In on-mountain amenities, the advantage goes to Canada. In city accessibility and lodging proximity, the advantage goes to the US. In elevation, the advantage goes to Canada. In big pass access, the advantage goes to the US. In lodging and ticket cost, the advantage goes to Canada. In Opry Ski, the advantage goes to the US. In Mountain Vibes, the advantage goes to Canada. 
In the experience category, each region won five categories. When breaking down the numbers, the U.S. scored a 57, while Canada scored a 60, indicating that Canada has a better experience by an extremely slim margin. Of course, that's not how it will be for everyone. If you find the categories that the U.S. won to be more important factors when booking your ski vacation, you should probably look to the U.S. And of course, the same goes for Canada's categories. With that said, I'm Skier72 signing off. Back to you now, Sean Ray. Thank you, Skier72, for your massive contributions to this project. Now, let's break down the total score of each region. The United States, with scores of 70 and 57, gets an overall grade of 63.5 out of 100. Canada, with scores of 67 and 60, gets an overall grade of 63.5 out of 100 as well. While I'm sure many of you believe we manipulated the ratings so that the regions would tie, I can assure you that each of us did our ratings independent of each other. So what does that mean? Well, one region is slightly better for pure skiing, and the other offers a slightly better experience. You now have all the tools you need to make a decision on where to book your ski vacation based on what is important to you. Altogether, the US and Canadian Rockies are great places to go skiing. The skiing can be great, and the experience can be great. Of course, both have the potential to be poor as well, but as a whole, both regions are a very good choice for a ski vacation. A huge thank you again to Arjun and Big White for providing footage. And of course, once again, a huge thank you to Skier72. On behalf of them, I, and all of the great people who helped make this guide possible, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to go check out Skier72 and Arjun B's channels and Big White's website, all linked in the description. We hope that you guys found this helpful, and as always, please put any questions down below. All my love, I'm out.